Hello. This journey begins with word woman. Who is woman? What does woman, the word woman mean? Well, as indicated in the dictionary, woman is a counterpart of man. One of the two sexes, two, only two sexes in the world. And throughout history, man and woman have been living together. It seems like we are very close. Well, I don't have to mention that. But when it comes to understanding each other, I think there is a distance between man and woman when it really like understanding each other for a fact. Well, if we understand each other totally, maybe the life would end. Anyhow, so uh, in the beginning, we, uh, I wanted to make a content on women's rights, especially in Mongolia. And we, MNB World Team, talked about many ideas, what is woman rights, and you know how to make the content, all that. But really, when I asked myself, do I know what the woman's right is? What the feminism is? What's the situation in Mongolia when it comes to women's right? Its violation and its protection. Who's doing what? I had no answers. The woman's right word has been talked about, well, as I googled it, I searched it, the woman's right has been talked about for last two centuries. But I never, to be honest, I never really looked into what it is really. I don't have an answer. I don't have a vague idea. So I decided to find answers to all these questions. What is woman right? What is the difference between men and women? What's the situation in Mongolia relating to women's right and its protection? How it's being violated? So, let the journey begin from here. The question of the difference between man and woman is very much socially constructed. Socially constructed. When I say socially constructed, it means there is much ideology or much, let's say, uh, belief or perspectives about the difference instead of exact differences. So we believe there's a, there is such, such, such differences. Mm -hmm. And that belief is very much socially constructed so, in different cultures. Uh -huh. So there's two level of things. One is the exact physical, biological, or maybe psychological, or maybe genetic mm -hmm. differences. And that mm -hmm. is quite precise and concrete. So but these besides, are scientific facts. Mm -hmm. These are quite concrete differences. Mm -hmm. But besides that, we imagine mm -hmm. different different differences okay. and we make different differences uh -huh. and those differences we believe men and women to have is socially socially constructed uh -huh. or socially motivated or socially let's say developed evolved um, and that means those imagined differences 
doesn't have to be scientifically proven or proven by hard science. Well, when we talk about the gender, we always uh, tend to be more abstract, but it's not something abstract. Think about your mother, your sisters. So these are women and uh, what the difference between you, me and them, right? So we should be more concrete about the subject. So mm -hmm. the difference is uh, what there. Are the concrete facts then? Uh, the truth is that they're uh, a little bit more uh, physically weak, but probably more morally strong than men. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the, the hard times, uh, men always come to women for support, mm. aren't we? <laughs> I would like to know about the difference between men and women according to Buddhist religion, Buddhist tradition. Mm. About the difference between the men and women mm -hmm. in uh, Buddhist teaching and uh, as well as in a practice. Mm -hmm. So according to the Buddha's teaching, well, uh, physically, mm -hmm. there is a difference between men and women. Physically? Physically. Okay. But intellectually, there is no difference. Intellectually, there's no difference. There is no difference. Men and women are equal in intelligent level. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Erina, for receiving us here. And uh, as uh, I told you on the phone, we are doing this program on uh, women's rights, especially in Mongolia. But we would like to know the difference between man and woman first. We, f we want to find out. So from your personal perspective, what's the difference? Oh, oh, it's a very interesting question. Uh -huh. um, first of all, I think in terms of uh, um, managing any organization or any projects, any, doing any art, I think male are more goal-oriented. Okay, male goal. are goal-oriented. More, okay. more, more goal-oriented mm -hmm. because they know the goal and then they would go for this goal no matter what's going to happen. Okay. I think uh, most of women is care about uh, the process that achieving to the goal. If you understand the difference of uh, between men, men and women, it's uh, it's much easier. You can create relationship. Mm -hmm. No matter it's your family or it's your work, it's mm -hmm. your you voting for someone. Mm -hmm. So you you understand. You understand, and then. We should, um, we should use the strengths for the better purpose and then and consider we know if we are a bit different. Okay. For example, we believe that maybe women are weak. Uh -huh. but, but how and who defines whether women are weak, weaker than man or woman, uh, than man? Mm -hmm. So it's like, but it is kind of a very common... But they are physically weak. well, weaker than men. That's not true, actually. <laughs> Imagine if okay. there's a wrestler champion woman or a boxer, she okay. will be m more powerful than you and me. I'm, I'm not yes. sure whether you can defend an Olympic champion wrestler woman. <laughs> no. We <laughs> might not. So this uh -huh. is basically it. So that even that doesn't have to be right. So most of the uh, differences we believe that men and women have is uh, is quite generic, means like general, generalization. <clears throat> Women are more, uh, how to say, stable. It's no wonder that uh, women uh, represented by uh, triangular shaped uh, uh, with a heavier bottom and men with a narrow bottom, right? Okay, can you... Well, on that. well, even if you go to a bathroom, there is like a triangle shape, right? So uh -huh. if a triangle shape turns downwards, it's a man. And if it turns up, then it's women's uh, bathroom, right? You, okay, you are referring to those shapes as women being stable. Yes. Stable. Yeah. In what term? Well, I used to work in the Ministry of Justice and uh, you know the state penitentiary institution belongs 
uh, it's under the Ministry of Justice. And I had a chance to conversate with many uh, personnel. And what I've learned is it's very difficult to sway women. It's uh, difficult to make them criminals. But if they're criminals, then it's very difficult to correct them. Really? Yeah, the men. I would say in Buddhism, because I said men and women are equal. Yes. So, and also they call it sentient being, which means sense, feeling. Mm -hmm. So the feeling of men and women towards the happiness and suffering is the equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you uh, sad is the equal, regardless of men and women. Mm -hmm. So there is spiritually, spiritually as well as like as a human being. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. But another difference, like physically different. And what another difference could be is just the responsibility, which means in a, it's an Indian tradition as well in Buddhist tradition, it's called the Dharma. Dharma means responsibility. If you're a man, you have certain responsibilities. If you're a woman, you have certain responsibilities. If you're a husband, you have certain responsibilities. If you have a, if you are a wife, you have certain responsibilities. And in the same way, each and every one has the responsibility. As been a lecturer, as been a student, as been a like politician, they have, they sh each and every one has the responsibility and divided. Divided and as long as they fulfill mm -hmm. those respons responsibilities, they are, they maintain the name of being a mother being a father, being a politician, being a lecturer, being a student. As long as you cannot fulfill these responsibilities, whatever you are, you could be a politician, you could be a father, you could be a mother, you could be a wife, but you are, in fact, you are not mother, you are not father, you are not a politician, you are not a student, you are not a teacher. Hello again. So, I've been uh, looking through the footages we have shot and when it comes to the difference between men and women we are only different physically and biologically. In other areas we are not, we are no different at all, men and women. In areas such as intellectual, emotional, spiritual areas we are the same. However, the belief that we have come to believe throughout our lives are socially constructed. For example, men are smarter than women or, or women are weaker than men. So these are socially constructed beliefs. And in fact, these beliefs have been evolving throughout the history of humanity. And there was one really interesting aspect that Dr. Lautimchik mentioned, and it was about men and women's responsibility, which are given by nature. And when you really think about that, we human beings are natural animals, and we are dictated by the nature. So, Females have motherly responsibilities and men have, uh, males have fatherly responsibilities. Well, from here on, I want to look into women's rights a little deeper and I want to find out the origin of this term, of this movement, especially in Mongolia. <laughs> We would like to know if there is a concept regarding women's right. First, we have to look at the f from where those terms came up. Mm -hmm. 
So we look at the origin of the terms mm -hmm. first. But uh, I will stop by saying this. Mm -hmm. First, we have to investigate and usage and interpretation. Mm -hmm. What is women's right? Mm -hmm. And then we will have to talk about uh, universalism or particularism. Is there any universal right, right. human right, or, or whatever right, mm -hmm. women's right? But is there any particular aspect of what does it mean, women's right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Түүхтэй. Монгол тийм эртний мэгтээчүүдийн байгууллага байгуулж байна. Тэгээ Монголын мэгтээчтэй албаа гэдэг манай энэ байгууллага чинь одоо энэ жил 95 жилийн өмнө болж байгаа Азийн анхны мэгтээчтэй байгууллага. Азийн төвшөнд бол бас анхдагч. The Mongolian Women's Organization was first established in 1924 as the Bureau for Women's Education. In 1924 women's right to vote was inserted in the constitution. The first chair of the organization was Miss Pagmdodlum Demdum, her husband was the great Mongolian writer De Natsikdorch. The 95-year-old Mongolian Women's Federation is the first women's organization that was established in Asia. When there's society, you have to, the society has to have law mm -hmm. that could uh, hold the society together. Mm -hmm. So in that construction, the law construction, mm -hmm. What is the difference between women's right and basic human right? Uh, Do you know what I mean? Mm, okay. Um, after uh, basic human rights mm -hmm. and children's rights, probably women's rights is the most, let's say, talked subject compared to probably men's mm -hmm. rights issue. And I think I should start talking about the idea of human rights. Mm -hmm. It is a Western construction. In the Roman law, man or the household head had the supreme sovereign power okay. to rule the whole family. Mm -hmm. And the uh, head of the household had the right to execute, means to kill, mm -hmm. like his servants, including wives, maybe children, mm -hmm. if they misbehave. In so, the Roman Empire? In the Roman okay. Empire. So in some cultures, mm -hmm. man had such supreme sovereign power or rights to rule. Mm -hmm. And against this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, law or this kind of culture, women's right needed to be protected. Okay. Mm -hmm. So why we talk about uh, human right or why do we talk about women's right? To protect them. Mm -hmm. From what? From man. So mm -hmm. in certain cultures, when wom uh, where women's rights were, let's say, violated, mm -hmm. where women regarded as lower than man, those cultures needed to develop mm -hmm. the idea of women's rights. And that is from Roman times, for example, or, or maybe in other cultures as well. The NGO network itself mm -hmm. was founded in 2000 by over 30 women's uh, non-governmental organizations. Mm -hmm. At the time, uh, they had a fairly broad idea about why women need to uh, come together uh, as one organization. And they decided to come together as a network. And that in itself is quite important because um, if you might remember, during socialist period, there was a big mass organization that was called the Women's Council. So the organizational forms, collective forms okay. of people coming together and especially units or organizations, groups coming together during socialism was very hierarchical. There was mm -hmm. an umbrella body and then there were members and it was a top-down structure. Mm -hmm. um, 
After 1990, there were different kinds of attempts on the parts of different NGOs uh, to find a different collective format. So in 2000, when women's NGOs decided to come together in order to unite their voices to, uh, let's say, influence policy, mm -hmm. they did not want to come together as a federation, um, but uh, decided to call themselves a network. So it denotes a more horizontal form of um, working together as independent organizations, right? Um, however, it wasn't until uh, about 2007 when um, the network became what it is today, Monfemnet National Network, which is a feminist human rights advocacy organization uh, that is membership based, um, but it is not member service. It is a public service, non-governmental organization. One of the key um, areas of Monfem Network is education and awareness raising. You know, it is not enough to yell loudly, oh, this happened, that happened, uh, you know, a person was beaten up or a woman was, you know, uh, subjected to harassment, but we need to do something before it happens. And so there is a lot of Monfemness energy goes into that kind of, uh, what we say, uh, developing, a promoting a culture that is supportive of gender equality, that is uh, respectful of human dignity of every person and that is egalitarian. Well, for me personally, there is no such thing as women's right. Okay. There is a universal right of a human being to be happy, treated with dignity, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yes. So the problem is, in most of societies, women don't get this treatment. So hence, this term, women's right, appeared. But would you agree, if there is a women's right, then it would be like men's right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Why, yeah. did, why nobody's talking about men's rights? Yeah, so uh, that just happened because uh, women are not enjoying the same rights as men in terms of this uh, possibility of reaching happiness and uh, justice and uh, being treated equally. So, um, in different countries, different cultures, they treat this issue, they treat women differently. Well, thank you for receiving us in your office. And uh, the first of all, my first, very first question is, what does women's rights mean from a legal perspective? Okay, when you talk about a woman's rights, we're not talking about some alien rights apart from human rights. As mm -hmm. uh, their famous quote says that uh, women's rights are human rights. Mm -hmm. Which means, when you talk about if women's rights, we means regardless of their sex and gender, or mm -hmm. sometimes uh, sexual orientation mm -hmm. and gender identity, mm -hmm. everybody has entitled to their rights. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but still, uh, uh, in many parts of the world, including Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, just because they are men or just because they are women or just because they are uh, gay or lesbian, mm -hmm. uh, many uh, rights listed in the constitution and other uh, legal instruments not really fulfilled in the real life. Mm -hmm. So that's why we talk about women's rights. Uh, because why, is, why men are not talking about men's rights? Because not you, so much, mm -hmm. not as much as women. Because it's because uh, uh, because of this legal system uh, and because of this social uh, structure mm -hmm. which supports the legal system, you know, mm -hmm. which uh, defines how law will be implemented in real life. Mm -hmm. It's usually the disadvantages on the woman, so that woman talks about it more because mm -hmm. we have we have to realize our uh, rights. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the situation is that many women are not mm -hmm. really uh, equal. Mm -hmm. Even though in the law, even though in the formal legislation, in the real realization and real exercise is totally mm -hmm. different. So mm -hmm. that uh, many women's rights efforts and movements usually goes for a real uh, implementations of the law. We are waiting for Miss Nara. She's a singer, and she last in the last parliament member election she was a candidate for parliament member and uh, so many single mothers support her because she's a single mother and she's not secretive, secretive about her status and uh, 
I wanted to ask her about the situation of single mothers living in Mongolia, which I hope she's on the way. I'm going to go to эрхтэй хүн эмгтэй өнгөд аваад үзэхээр эмгтэй чууд нилүү давуу эрхтэй юм шиг тий. Тэгээд тэр эрхийн тухайд байнгал ярьдаг. Тэр эрхийн төлөө байнгал тэмцдэг тий. Байгаль тэр эрхийг одоо тунгаалдаг, зарладаг. Тэсэн мөртлөө хамгийн сонин одоо юу гэдгийг одоо яг ингээ хувь л нэгэ зац яг эмгтэй хүний эрх бол эрхтэй хүний эрх бол гэцэн байхгүй. Тэсэн мөртлөө хамгийн их зөрчигддөг яг тэр асуудал нь эмгтэй чууд эрх байдаг байхгүй юу? If you see some uh, international evaluation on Mongol gender equality, or, or as a lawyer, if I read the laws, mm -hmm. for example, in the Constitution, we have non discrimination clause based on sex. And also uh, in the, the list of rights, like the list of human rights, there, there is this uh, women and men are equal in all of their parts of life, like social, economic, and family, and political life, it should be equal. And also we have law on gender equality and law on uh, combating domestic, based, uh, domestic violence, etc. And a lot of, uh, for example, uh, labor law has some clauses protecting women's rights. But these are formal laws. Formal, I mean on the paper. You know, okay. It's on the paper. Mm -hmm. Real issue is if, if they are really implemented on the ground. Mm -hmm. So, comparably, I would say in the legal terms, in the legal, uh, on paper, we are really in a good position. Still, we have... We have a good constitution. We have a good... Yeah, uh, good laws. Good and, laws, okay. Yeah, and good, probably, uh, lower level of uh, legislations as well. But... Of course, we have to go far. Of course, there are. Uh, if we talk about specific issues, we have we can talk more. But still, in the real issues, implement, implementation, I would say. Yeah. To be honest, I think I was against the idea of women's right, women's rights, because I. I thought, well, men and women, no matter what, live together and we balance each other's weaknesses out. Why so much noise about women's rights and all these fights and movements, right? And then again, maybe because I was a typical ignorant man who was raised in traditional patriarchal society with traditional patriarchal norms and standards. And someone when, and when someone grows up in that norm and in that traditional society without questioning, that person becomes oblivious to what happens to the other people, the other others in that society. So I want to put myself in the shoes of Mongolian women this time and to really see our society from different angles. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.